Today, let's talk about the Stratocasters that want to be a little bit more Les Paul. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. So to fully appreciate this unique Stratocaster we're documenting on consignment today, we need to do a little bit of history on carved top Stratocasters. Yeah, that's right, carved top strats are a thing. They were first created in 1995 for the NAMM show, designed through the help of three main guys, Gene Baker, John Sir, and John Page. Gene was the main builder of them, but they all three had their input on what they thought would make it good and what might make it bad. So these very first ones are quite interesting. They had an HSS setup and they only featured two knobs. They had a swooped heel, but it was still a bolt on neck, but they had some very cool, unique colors from the original run. All the way from burst colors to green and somewhere in between, a lot of them had like really cool, fancy bird's eye necks. These were the very early days of the formal Fender Custom Shop. Now, since then, you've had other models like the Showmaster that kind of built upon this idea, and you've had other master-built creations varying from set necks to just straight-up bolt-on to the original hybrid design, and a whole plethora of colors. But at the end of the day, it's a Fender Stratocaster with a carved maple top instead of just being like alder or ash. They were the fancy boutique Fenders, which is probably why John Sir ended up, you know, making his own brand, Sir, and creates fancy guitars like that even yet today. And usually Fender guys, they love tradition, they don't really care about the super fancy stuff. But if you're a Gibson fan trying to get into Fender guitars, these are always the ones that kind of intrigue me. And I'm teaching you that not because we're documenting an original Gene Baker, but actually a later master built version that kind of built upon this idea and made it a little bit different. Played with our pickups, played with the finish. Wait until you see this thing. Oh, wow. That is quite fascinating. So I can tell that top is just gonna jump at you when you get it into the sunlight. But look at this, we got some strange pickups to talk about and a unique interesting bridge. We've got the original two knob design yet and then some freaky stuff going on with our neck. All right, so this is a master built version from the year 2020. It's a Yuri Shishkov creation, but this is the first carved top strat I think I've actually held in my hands. That's like super ultra high end. It's just so strange having the Les Paul top carve on one of these things because normally you don't have that and it doesn't necessarily naturally lend to this body shape because you got this whole additional horn up here that doesn't get anything. And something about this design just makes it seem obnoxiously long, like longer than a regular Stratocaster. I think it's because it's not quite as rounded on the edges. It doesn't actually have binding, it's just the exposed maple cap to give it that look, but they super ultra expose it to make it wider than most manufacturers. So I think that's kind of playing with it a little bit. And the fact that we, we just don't have a pick guard at all, that's probably what it is. Most Stratocasters have this big guard covering everything. That and we're rocking the TV Jones pickups with a hardtail bridge. And yes, we do have fancy electronics to talk about today too. But trying to be a little bit more traditional here, we have a maple fretboard that's all glossed over, but it's flamed and we've got abalone inlay. So that makes it a little bit fancier, but that's pretty much where tradition ends because this is actually crafted out of mahogany. Most Stratocasters are not mahogany, so it's kind of hard to see in this lighting, but we'll try to get that on the workbench. But hey, at least it's just a regular bolt-on. We don't have any swoops or comfort cuts to make it even stranger. And we've got our usual cutaway. But hey, knowing that this has the mahogany neck, it's interesting. They actually had to put a flame maple veneer over top of it to make it extra fancy. And as far as the case, it's got the custom shop branding at the top. It's just a nice black velvet-like interior. We've got our traveler card in here, which acts as a COA as well as telling us all the other detailed specs. And we also get a nice strap. So first impressions, it feels very different. It's like a modernized boutique take on a Stratocaster, but yet still within the parent family. So that's interesting. Let's throw it on the workbench to get a deeper understanding of its specs before we plug it in to hear how it sounds. After reading the spec sheet on this one, there's a few other hidden surprises, but let's start with our pickups. They are TV Jones in style. You can see the branding on the outside. Looks like it's the Magnetron in the neck and a matching Magnetron in the bridge. I get circuit readings of 7.74k ohms in the bridge, 5.06 in the neck, and the middle for fun, 3.1. But also keep in mind, you can coil split these for about half the readings. 
But interestingly enough, that is only active for your bridge pickup. And no, this other one doesn't move for the neck or anything. They both seem to have green wires coming out of them. So I'd imagine they both could be split if you wanted to wire it that way, but I don't know a lot about those pickups. All I know is I had a parts caster Cabernet at once that had TV Jones pickups in it, and it was phenomenal. And even though this is a newer Fender guitar, it actually does have some scratches and play wear and a little bit of fret wear. So <laughs> I have high hopes that this thing's just going to sound fantastic. As far as how those are mounted into the guitar, they just utilize two screws and they go into the body like that and then you have these foam blocks to help set your height. But here's a good look at where your maple cap joins onto your back body wood, which at first I thought was mahogany, but the spec sheet just calls it exotic wood. So I'm not sure if that was a placeholder or if it's like a more exotic version of mahogany, but I'd assume that's what the MAH stands for up here. But the spec that really threw me for a loop is it's listed as a chambered body with a center block. So I'm assuming before they put the maple cap on it, they actually route out the wood kind of semi-hollow in style, but just leave it solid up the center. Unfortunately, so far, it doesn't look like I have a way to access those cavities, so it just might be hidden chambers. But I had not heard of that on these fancy guitars before. But here's a look at the hardtail bridge. You've got the vintage Fender style saddles. They're pretty basic. You just put the strings through the back of the body, but you don't have to worry about any of the springs in the back. As far as your controls, master volume, master tone, and this is not a five-way switch. It's only three because we've got two pickups. So neck, bridge, and both of them. Unfortunately, during the filming process of this one, it was definitely overcast, so the outside B-roll shots might not be as crazy as it could be. But even in artificial lighting, you can see that this thing just moves quite exponentially. They used a nice piece of maple on here. But in unflattering lighting situations, you can see there's like some picking wear right here where a pick guard would be. It's kind of hard to catch it on camera, but you can kind of see what I'm talking about right here. There's another small patch of that over here. But again, that's in really unflattering lighting situations. Most times it looks pretty clean. And yes, that is after polishing it. I also noticed a small ding right here on the top. I really want to take a second to appreciate the natural binding that they put on this. So again, how they do that is we've got the maple top on here. Instead of taking the time to route it out and then put the binding, they essentially just give you flamed maple binding by not putting a finish over that. Well, a colored finish anyways. It has a finish. But what I really like here is the fact that they masked off an even amount along the top as well. So again, it just looks like a natural binding from the top as well as on the edge. Usually when somebody does that as an aftermarket modification, they only do the edge scraping because to get that to be perfectly even around the whole guitar, that takes some skill. And that's why you need Yuri to do it. Well, let's move on from our body to our mahogany neck and flamed maple fretboard. So at first I didn't think I was going to have to clean this at all, but then when I got up to the first like seven frets, I actually saw some fret wear. So you can see some flattening in like your higher string registers. And since this is a gloss fretboard anyways, it makes it really easy to polish these frets at the same time of cleaning our fretboard. Now fret wear disclosed, I, I don't think you have to worry about that right now. It's very minor. I just want you to know if you're interested in buying this. But even this piece of maple has some very nice movement to it and your abalone inlays. You get the cool abalone side marker inlays too. It's kind of interesting how they actually put those in the neck and not the fretboard. So they show up in the more blue part of the neck. And I guess if we're being critical here, the inlay location is like just under the fretboard for all of them. Like it just barely touches into the maple neck. However, the 17th one is just a little bit lower than all the rest and is completely within the next territory. We've got 22 narrow tall style frets. The fretboard is an even 9.5 inch radius, has a 25 and a half inch scale length, and I measure a 1.7 inch nut width, which increases to 2.05 by the 12th. And it's billed as a modern C neck measuring 0.85 first fret neck depth and 0.89 by the 12th. Here's a look at that profile at the first fret and the 12th fret. Seems to get a little bit more rounded towards the 12th. It's definitely a very slim C neck shape. The next thing I found interesting, yes, we have the maple cap up here, but look how they have the blue running all the way up here. They don't actually expose the maple fretboard on this side. Even though you can definitely see the maple right there. That's not always the case on like Fender USAs. But if you look on the edge, you can actually still see the maple peek through. So I think what they're trying to do by removing the finish in that particular area is make this look like it has binding on the neck too. But that's one of those things you might see and go, they didn't get the paint right. If you don't understand what they were trying for. 
But this headstock veneer is beautiful. It's got the headstock flame, it's got the wood grain, you have the biflex truss rod, so you can actually see the cap right there, and then you don't have to take your neck off to adjust it, so that's very good for a player. And you've got the more so modern Schaller tuners with a single string tree and our custom classic Stratocaster logo. Now let's talk about the back. It looks like we're running 250k CTS pots in here with a regular three-way toggle switch. So when we looked at our pickups earlier, I saw they both had the same lead coming out of it. So I thought it was a bit strange only one of them was coil split. So I followed the leads in here. This is the bridge pickup. So it is four conductor wiring. You've got a red, green, and then it looks like maybe a white and black. And that is indeed how it left the factory. That's the only one that's attached to our push-pull pot. This is your neck pickup right here, and the splitter leads were tied off. But if you wanted to add that to the pot, I don't see why you couldn't. You could even make it look factory, because there's no solder work you'd have to touch up. You'd just take that off and connect it to the pot. Since the bridge pickup is hotter than the neck, maybe they left that there for the middle position. It makes more sense just to have one of them split. Otherwise, you'd have to have two push-pull pots to get that same functionality. So clearly not an error, just a choice. But I was really hoping we'd be able to see the full body chamber but no they must hide them i even tried looking in our output jack and nope no luck the back plate has some fine scratches to it as well kind of looks like a firebird or explorer's pick guard it's interesting to see a stratocaster without the back routed out of it but here's our string through ferrules and just like the top in most lighting angles it looks really clean but i would say this is the deepest area of scratches on this guitar looks like somebody's gene rivets might have got it a little bit that appears in many lighting situations and you do have a few other light surface blemishes but if we adjust the brightness you can actually see through to the wood and you do see this in person a little bit it's got a nice dancing figuring to it it appears to be a two-piece body but it has some nice figuring to it so that's something you can look forward to because then when you actually transition to the mahogany neck i would say it's a little bit darker in color so that tells you it's a slightly different wood because it's the same finish over top of everything it's just the wood color underneath is different Check out our flame maple binding viewing it from the back. That's cool. But it looks like we're rocking Schaller strap lock stock in our usual locations. But this does indeed have a skunk stripe. They didn't necessarily need to have it because it's a separate maple fretboard over our mahogany neck. But if you're looking for it, you can see it. And it's almost like a cool TV blue finish because you can still see the mahogany wood grain. You can especially see what I'm talking about right here on the headstock. So it might come off pretty dark in photos, but in person you can appreciate the interesting color scheme that they've got going on here. And the serial number for this model falls on our neck plate. Then up here we have the Yuri Shishkov Master Builder decal. All said and done, this weighs 7 pounds, 11.8 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this very unique Stratocaster sounds. is still very familiar to a Stratocaster, but the bridge? <laughs> Much thicker than a usual Stratocaster, that's for sure. Now we can also split the bridge. That gets you a little bit closer to Stratocaster territory. I see why that's in there now. Now the combination of the two.
and split. As far as cleans go, I don't really like the coil split as compared to everything else, but when you isolate it and think regular Stratocaster, then it makes sense. Otherwise, it's basically like a two humbucker strat. So let's go ahead and get some dirty tones. Now that we know all about this interesting blue Stratocaster, what are my final thoughts on this thing? It doesn't feel like a Strat at all. As I was saying earlier, it's very wide and almost flat feeling. I mean, if somebody handed this to me and said it's like a Sir or some other boutique guitar that's not Fender, I would totally believe it. But once you see the branding on the headstock, it's like, okay, I guess they went really crazy on this one. So if you were looking for your first Stratocaster, nah, this, this is probably not it. This is for somebody who has a bunch of Strats in their collection or they want something so vastly different that it upsets the traditionalists. I will say these pickups do sound quite good in a Stratocaster body. I found myself kind of missing the trem system on it, but being a hardtail is cool in its own right. But what a freaky and beautiful Yuri Shishkov creation. All right, Troglodytes, if you're interested in being the next owner of this one, again, this is in my shop on consignment, so you can find it on troglysguitarshow.com or on Reverb. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy your newfound information, and we'll catch you guys tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.